So you may have heard Molly and I over there talking, uh, calling a lot of people who make toilets over the last uh, several weeks. And uh, we're currently working on a presentation, a series of presentations for Recode Oregon, for both the uh, state DEQ and its public presentations on uh, on-site sanitation systems, which is to say alternatives to the current regime of septic systems. And um, the issue is, is, it's often described, it says on-site treatment is the name of the, the program. Uh, what's treated, or what's actually treated in a septic tank. And it's not, many people don't actually realize what it's, how it's working. And really what it is is a settling tank. There's water flowing in, it slows down really, really slowly. All the sludge settles to the bottom. And there are these anaerobic bacteria. They're actually your gut bacteria. So you're actually seeding the system with bacteria. And uh, they are digesting uh, carbon material active, like food that's still left in your food in that tank. And then the liquid flows out from there into a drain field. And that's where the real treatment actually occurs. It's in the soil, in the subsoil. And uh, there's actually not that much life. It's surprisingly effective treatment given how little life is actually in the soil down there. Uh, most leach fields are least a foot down in the soil, and they're draining through the soils which are somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees. There's not much that, not much living down there, no sunlight, uh, very few nutrients, and um, the sand particles, the bacteria in there capture most of the bacteria that are left in the effluent, and everything else flows down into uh, the groundwater and forms a plume of the nutrients that were in your excrement that can go for miles. And it's normally thought that this is going to disperse. It's actually pretty much just heads in a straight line, whichever direction the groundwater is in. And you never know whether you're going to intersect one of those plumes when you're drilling a well. They're not mapped. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find them. It's very expensive even to identify where they are. So it's, made, it's a major groundwater problem. You know, you don't know when you're going to inter intersect this plume of nitrates, especially, which is the thing you really worry about in the groundwater. Um, and those nitrates have been linked to increasing rates of cancer, diabetes now, and uh, the most wonderfully frightening thing if you're trying to get people to stop polluting groundwater, blue baby syndrome. Right? Doesn't that sound great? It's when uh, it's a sudden infant death issue where children turn blue and die suddenly been linked to nitrate pollution. So for those reasons, uh, there are limits on nitrate pollution. Oregon has higher standards than the federal government. Say you can't have more than 7 milligrams of nitrate per liter. The federal government says you can't have more than 10. Both of those still can cause some health effects. They're not going to kill your baby, but there may be some long-term, uh, not particularly acute health effects from that. And um, so, State's looking at what else could you use. So that's what we've been calling about. Other systems and talking to people who have systems which you can't get permitted in Oregon, which uh, treat nitrates and address how to capture those nutrients and not put them into uh, the groundwater. That's what we work on. What are, what are some of the alternatives? Or like, what's your favorite? Favorite? Um, I don't really have a favorite because like there are a couple sides to the favorite, right? There's like what's your favorite toilet in the restroom as a user? Is what do you actually want to manage and maintain if you were if you were doing operations and maintenance on those systems? Uh, what has the highest groundwater quality? And then there's what can I convince my mom to use? You know? And those are kind of like spread out all over the board. Um, I like the systems that are designed from the beginning for what's generally called euphemistically, and beneficial reuse, which is to say figuring out how your poop can be used to grow food. Um, because really, there's no, there's no other option for it. You have to, those nutrients can either end up being polluting somewhere in the groundwater and surface waters, or they can be captured and reused to grow food. So you're either going to accidentally eat it in a fish, <laughs> uh, accidentally encounter it in a well, or purposely 
purposefully encounter it in a properly designed system after it's grown some wheat or something and made some bread or uh, perhaps been applied to rangeland and turned into a, a burger bill burger, which is what happens right now with your Portland sewer system. So um, the, the systems I really like are the ones that capture human excrement at the beginning. The urine diversion toilets, which have two holes, one that goes to the front, one that goes to the back. Those are great, they catch pee. Dry toilets, like composting toilets, which go into a composting system. I think those are those are the best. I, I, uh, but those nutrients aren't actually really that valuable. So the, the hard thing is how do you how do you actually do that in a system that works? Because you know it's fertilizer, but it's like thirty bucks worth of fertilizer that you're generating here, maybe sixty bucks worth of fertilizer. Getting someone to handle your entire toilet system and clean it out and handle it for like sixty bucks worth of fertilizer that has to be hauled somewhere and applied is. Uh, Pretty hard. So there are a lot of issues. That's why they're on the phone.